Okay, now we are doing the next problem. It's on slide 12. A mass of 10 grams of copper, so I know the, the mass of copper, grams is heated in boiling water and is added to a calorimeter containing a hundred milliliters of water. Okay, do not mix the two the two waters. You have a mass of water that is boiling at 100 degrees and you throw the copper in there. This is done to ensure that the copper has the same temperature, 100 degrees, as the boiling water. So we do not mess with that water except to know that the temperature of the boiling water is going to be the same as the initial temperature of the copper. Because as it, you leave it in there to boil, the copper to boil in the water, it reaches thermal equilibrium, so it reaches 100 degrees Celsius as well. Now, once that's done, I take that piece of copper and I add it to a calorimeter that contains 100 milliliters of water, which for all practical purposes, we're gonna count as 100 grams of water if we count the density of water to be one gram per mil. So uh, whatever milliliters you have, that's gonna be exactly the amount of, of um, grams of water. We also know that the specific heat for water is 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius. So let's write the rest of these. The initial temperature of copper is 100 degrees Celsius because it was in the boiling water. Then I have another water, mass of my water is 100 grams, okay? So I, put, I have hot copper and I put it in a calorimeter that contains cooler water. I mix these two systems now. If the water in the calorimeter started at 20 degrees, so if my initial water temperature started it's at 20 degrees and plateaus at 20.7, so the final temperature 20, reaches only 20.7 degrees, what is the specific heat capacity for copper? What is the C for copper? Okay, what do I know? I also know the specific heat for water, which is 4.184 joules per gram per degree Celsius. Now, I know the mass of the copper. I know the initial temperature of the copper. I know the mass of the water that I added, I add the hot copper to, and I know the initial temperature of that water. What I don't know is the final, or what I, what I also know is the final temperature that plateaus at 20.7 degrees. Now think about this. If I put a hot object into a cool object, we talked about it in, I think, slide two. When we mix these two systems together, there's going to be some hit um, heat exchange. So the hotter object is going to give some heat to the cooler object until they reach what is called thermal equilibrium, which means, in very practical terms, that they have reached the same temperature. So if, they, if it's fi the final temperature plateaus at 20.7, that means that both my copper and my water have reached the same temperature. Copper started at 100 and it loses heat, so it, the temperature of copper drops to 20.7. Water was cooler, so it gains that heat from the copper and it increases from 20 degrees to 20.7 degrees Celsius. That is, the te that is the temperature change for the water. I am asked to find the, the uh, temperature or the specific heat for copper. I cannot find that directly because I don't know what the amount of heat that the copper lost. I cannot figure that out directly. But what I do know is I can calculate the amount of heat that the water gained. 
We talked about this in the lecture slides, but we also know that the, the amount of heat that the copper loses, and it's got a negative value because it loses it, is equal to the amount of heat that the water gains, which is positive because the water gains it. There's just convention. So Q for water is equal to the negative of the Q for, for the copper. These two are equal in value. The only difference is the negative sign. I can figure out the Q for water because I have all the pieces. I have the initial and final temperature for water. I have the specific heat for water. And I have the mass. So let's start with that. Q for water is equal to M for water times C for water times T final, which is the same, so I don't put a W or a Cu for copper, minus the initial temperature of water. Okay, I have the mass of the water, 100 grams, times the specific heat for, or for water, which is 4.184 joules over grams degrees Celsius, times final temperature, which is 20 0.7 minus 20, which was the initial temperature, degrees Celsius. Degrees cancel, grams cancel, and this will give me 0 0.7. So now I can multiply all this together, and I get a value of 292.88 joules. That is how much energy the water gained from the copper. This, once again, is equal to the same amount that the copper lost, but with a negative sign. So Q for copper is equal to minus 292.88 joules. That's how much the copper lost. Once again, that negative is there to show us that the copper lost the energy. Now that I know this, I can solve for the specific heat for copper because I know that Q for copper is equal to the mass of copper multiplied by the specific heat for copper times the delta T for copper. To find the specific heat, to isolate that, I divide both sides by the mass of copper and um, delta T for copper mass of copper, delta T for copper. These cancel out, this cancels out, isolating the specific heat. I have all of these values now. I have Q because I just calculated it from the water. I couldn't calculate this directly for the, from the data for copper, but I could calculate it from the water and assume that all that the water gained was lost by the copper. So I can go ahead and plug in those numbers. Minus 292.88 joules divided by the mass of copper, which is 10 grams, times the, the difference in temperature, which is going to be, be very careful here, because most students, this is where they struggle the most. This is where they make the biggest mistake. We are doing final temperature minus initial temperature for the copper. Do not be afraid that it's a negative number because this negative is going to take care of that negative temperature change. Therefore, my final temperature, which is 20.7, minus the initial temperature, which is 100 degrees. That's in degrees Celsius. That gives me, so this gives me minus 79.3 degrees Celsius. The negative is going to cancel because you divide a negative number by another negative number. And that gives me um, 0 0.369 joules per gram per degree Celsius. Once again, I can stop and I can think to myself, okay, is, does this answer make sense? I have 0.369 joules per gram degree Celsius. As I said earlier, 
the specific heats, especially for metals, are smaller than one. They're small numbers. So yes, it does make sense. If I had somehow made the math here, um, if I didn't calculate this right, or I, I instead of dividing with both of these numbers, I multiplied, then I would have gotten a larger number, a number larger than one, and that would have been um, a red flag that I would have seen. Okay, this is the end of this problem, and then we have a few more to do in the last slide, and then we'll be done with this chapter.